Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sandringham's open evening live talk from our Sandpit Theatre. It is just gone six o'clock um, today. So thank you for joining us. Um, I'm sorry you can't be with us in person. We normally have our open evening in July. However, we hope this will be a good substitute. Uh, there has been a number of things put on our website which you can use and access to help you with the decision making. Tomorrow morning, there will be a new document going live, which is a 360 live tour of the school. So if you wanted to see the facilities, you can do that. We've also decided that we can't have open morning tours. I'm sure you will understand the reason for that. So um, I'm going to take a bit of a risk here and do a live open morning tour with my camera walking around the school. So we will put on the website when that is going to be and if you'd like to tune in live and I will walk you around the school as it is in action. Um, bit of a risk, but we like taking some risk in this school. Okay, let's get down to business. Um, a little bit about Sandringham. We're a very large school, eight form entry now. We've grown over the years. We're obviously mixed and very proud of that and take boys and girls. And there are just over 1600 young people in the school as of this week, 430 in the sick form. And our motto, as I'm sure you're aware, is everybody can be somebody. We've had to make some adjustments like all schools due to COVID and uh, the principles are basically young people have to regularly sanitise their hands. They have to keep apart as far as possible. We've adjusted the classrooms, uh, the lunch arrangements um, and, and so on. So. Um, Clearly, it is problematic for all schools, I'm sure you're aware, managing large numbers in fairly confined spaces. So far, I think secondary schools across Hertfordshire have done an excellent job, uh, really proud of that. Um, and we're very happy that you are working with us to make young people get back into school and have a good education. Admissions is a question that a lot of you ask us, and if you do have any particular questions about admissions, do contact us at the school through uh, email or phone. But basically we take 240 in each year group and year seven, and uh, it's basically closest to the school, or if you have a sibling, or if you have a special need or whatever. So those are the reasons, the criteria, they are on the website, but if there's any confusion, do get in touch with us and we'll do our best to help you out and understand. Um, your start at Sandringham, and I'm talking now to the young people, and hopefully there are some young people watching, um, starts as follows. You're put into a tutor group, and there will be 30 young people with you, with your tutor. Each tutor group is part of a house, and there are eight houses, and you will stay in that house throughout your time at the school, and there are competitions and things like that which you take part in, and hopefully your house, at the end of the year, will win the House Cup. You will also have a sick form buddy. Unfortunately this year we can't do that physically, so we've regrouped and you will have a virtual sick form buddy. Obviously by the time you may join the school next year, that could be different again and it will be a real sick form buddy, but that will help you when you get to the school. You'll also be able to join some of the uh, clubs and extra activities that are run. There are numerous of those. This year we've downscaled slightly, but we are still running trips. Uh, sorry, not trips. There's a little slip. We are live. We are still running uh, activities after school, but they are now limited per year group. Um, and we are waiting to see whether we can run trips next year. You will start your lessons, as you can see there. And unlike at junior school, you will move from one class to another and have a various, various teachers teaching you for the various subjects that are on offer. And of course, uh, what we do at the end of the year is we try and encourage everybody to have Christmas dinner together. We do it in a number of sittings and you can see their photograph from last year. We don't know whether we'll be able to do that this year. Um, we're very much hoping we are. But of course, if we do have Christmas dinner, then the turkeys are going to be unlucky. So um, we'll wait and see. Um, and of course, we have a Peak District trip. And this is famous in Sandringham. All the young people have been to the Peak District. Our current Year 7 uh, would have been going next week. They clearly can't do that. So we've rescheduled it for next spring, late spring. So we're hoping by then we are able to take them away. By the time you join the school, you'll be going in the September, three weeks into your journey here. 
A little bit about our ethos. We aim to challenge you and to aim to get you to be really world class in everything that you do. And this is critical, I think. And being world class is not pretentious. It's simply being able to do things that you may never have dreamed about because you've had the opportunity to try and do that. You can see here some of our sick formers last year who came with me to the Gambia, meeting their counterparts there and really developing themselves as individuals as well as developing our link. At Sandringham, apart from everybody can be somebody, we have our three R's. You can see them there and young people are um, helped to work within these so that we can all get on together and be as good as we can be. And I think the three R's, uh, two out of the three, are particularly relevant at the moment. One of them is respect and that's respect for COVID. And the other is obviously responsibility to follow what we have as the rules so that we can um, get over this uh, awful pandemic that we're in. Our students um, are wonderful, and I say that um, without any problem at all. Whenever I talk to them, they're bright and breezy, they're engaged just as they were today as they're going home. They like to talk to adults and explain about their experiences. And the comments there were made 12 years ago when Ofsted last came into the school. They're as relevant now as they were then. Um, I would love Ofsted to come, and in fact, if any Ofsted inspectors or HMI are watching this live broadcast and want to put us down as a visit, that's great. Phone me up tomorrow. I'm sure the staff at the school won't be happy with that, but I would be delighted. And the reason for that is that you will see the same here, if not more and stronger provision than you did 12 years ago. The learning ethos is uh, something which we're very proud of. Um, we do challenge and inspire young people. There's a strong academic focus. We have innovation everywhere you look. And of course, the behavior for learning is very powerful. And uh, we will show you that when I take you on that live tour of the school, uh, you will see the behavior for learning in action then. Personal development is a key part of our curriculum, uh, not just as an add-on, but it is now from this term, we have started a new program within the timetable time, uh, increase the provision for personal development in line with national guidance. And we feel that is gonna greatly benefit students um, so that they become even more confident in themselves. A bit about performance. Um, people always want to know how schools have performed. This year is very different to other years, as I'm sure you are aware. You cannot have escaped what's been going on in the press. So I'm gonna share with you 2019 figures for Sandringham because these were results from um, exams that were taken by our young people. You can see they were incredibly strong at GCSE. Um, and more importantly, over time, they are consistently very high. Top 100 school, mixed schools in the country, uh, comprehensive schools performance, and we're very proud of that. I put a question mark against 2020, and that isn't because we don't know what the results are. We do. The outcomes were even stronger. We are very pleased that our young people, both the GCSE and A-level, have been able to move on to the next stages of their journey, whether it's in the sixth form here or at college or going on to university. Um, but they weren't the same. They didn't sit the exams, so we're not reporting those. Um, however, if you are interested in the figures, we do have those, and I think you would be incredibly pleased to see them. A-level is a similar, a similar position. We work with Beaumont and Verulam in the Beausanne Vert Trust, um, and we're very proud of that. You can see the figures there from 2019, and again, the figures for this year were stronger still. So that has enabled the sick form to go off to university. This is a chart showing last year's cohort going off and where they went to for various courses. You can see the variety there. Um, we haven't quite finished the one for this year because there were so many of them and we had to readjust things to fit them all onto the map. But I can tell you 169 are starting at university either this week or next week. I was talking to Maddie just now who's on reception and she's off to Nottingham next Friday and I'm sure she'll be very successful there. So these personal journeys are really important to us and this is what schooling is about, helping young people to the next stages in their lives. So I'm going to stop for a moment and pass over to some students because I'm sure you don't want to listen to an old person like myself. 
um, it's useful to listen to young people um, and that's what we're going to do. So we have um, Lucy, who's our deputy head girl. She has stepped in at the last minute this afternoon um, because Jess, our head girl, is unable to be with us tonight. Um, and we have Simi, our head boy. And Simi, just before he went live, um, told me that uh, he'd actually bef prefer to be performing Zumba to you rather than speaking. So um, if we could have a vote, who would like to see some Zumba going? I'm sure that would be very high. Unfortunately, we can't do it because he's not in his kit to do that. So I'm now going to pass over to Simi and Lucy for a moment in time. Hello, everyone. I'm Simi Ademi, head boy at Sonjum School, and I'd like to introduce you to Lucy. Hello everyone, I'm Lucy, I'm Deputy Head Girl at Sandringham and I'm going to pass back to Simi so he can share his Sandringham experience. To me, Sandringham is an outstanding school which allows students to become the best versions of themselves. I joined Sandringham in Year 7 and chose to stay on in the sixth form. I decided on Sandringham not only for the education but also for the range of opportunities and facilities available to all students from a 3G pitch to a theatre to a range of language exchanges, there really is something for everyone. If you choose to come to Sondrum, you'll settle in very quickly as the school is more than friendly. Beyond the classroom, there are excellent facilities you can use, whether you want to pursue sports, drama or music. Personally, I like to use the school gym to exercise. In year six, I loved netball and, dra and drama. Sandrium gave me the opportunity to experience these extracurriculars further at the level that suited me. This is a part of Sandrium life that I think everyone can engage with, because regardless of your ability, you can participate in whatever you enjoy. I think this really encapsulates the school motto, everybody can be somebody, because regardless of anything but just throwing yourself into the opportunities Sandrium gives you, you will achieve. I like Sandrium because it allows the students to get the best out of their education. From an early stage, Sandrum instills strong morals and good ethos into their students, allowing them to make sure they get excellent academic results. I study A-level history, economics and philosophy, and I'm hoping to take history further at degree level next year. I study A-level biology, chemistry and maths, and I hope to study computer science next year at university. This year, Simi and I, alongside the Senior Executive Committee, are hoping to launch a Virtual Buddies programme to settle the New Year Sevens in. Coupled with a huge support base made up of the teachers and fellow students, each individual will become an integral part of the Sandringham community but from day one. We are also trying to improve the sustainability of the school by improving the recycling collection of plastic bottles and also expanding our pen collection system. We are also we hope to see opening you. a student newsletter called The Sandpost. We hope to see we you, hope next, to see you year. next year. And I'd like to introduce Deputy Head, Dr. Creeby. Good evening. The quality of education at Sandringham is second to none, and this is made possible by the expert staff at the school. Our teachers are highly qualified with degrees from the best universities in the country and they're very experienced, but they love their subjects. And as such, their passion rubs off on our students. So not only are our students knowledgeable, but they're inspired too. And behind the scenes, the professionalism of our support staff, from our teaching assistants and our pastoral staff, our technicians and administrators, ensures that the quality of our education um, is inclusive, it's delivered with care, and we have the best facilities and resources. The curriculum is absolutely fantastic, and making that transition from year six into year seven is an exciting one. You will go from being in one classroom with one teacher to studying 14 subjects with 14 different teachers in 14 different classrooms in year seven. And although we write your timetable in year seven and eight, when it comes to year nine, you get to choose. For two hours a week, you can choose different subjects that can vary throughout the year. So you get a chance to turn your hand to maybe forensic science or debating. This is fantastic preparation for your options when you get to year nine to prepare for year 10 and the start of your GCSEs. 
In addition to personal development and English, maths, science, languages and PE in the core of the GCSEs, you get to choose GCSE options, obviously with the guidance of the school, your families, but ultimately it's determined by your interests and ambitions. The subject choice is no less impressive in the sixth form. As you can see here, there's a fantastic list that students can choose from. And so if a student's interested in the operating theatre or the West End theatre, there'll be A-levels and vocational qualifications to suit them. Our students not only learn in the classroom, but outside of the classroom as well, and they have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, there's a picture here of our music tour to Belgium last year, um, and our calendar is absolutely packed with other visits um, and trips. Uh, perhaps um, you're more at home donning a pair of hiking boots and navigating across the hills of England, and if that's the case, then the Duke of Edinburgh um, is for you. Um, all of our students at Sandringham get to visit uh, universities and, and perhaps you'll find yourself volunteering in the St Albans community during our extended learning week. We are so proud of our students. They take hold of every opportunity and they work really, really hard. And so it's important to us that we recognise their achievement. Now, we do that day to day in lessons by awarding house points. We write postcards home to our students. Uh, but in a more high-profile way, uh, termly, we have a role of honour which recognises dedication in each of the subject areas. And annually, we have prize giving um, and we invite families to attend that also. We are always looking for opportunities for students to lead. They can step forward and join the student leadership committee. They might mentor a younger student. And maybe one day they'll be in Lucy and Simi's shoes um, talking to the next lot of students coming to Sandringham School. I will now hand back to Mr. Gray. Thank you, Dr. Creevy. And that's a bit of an outline of the curriculum and the opportunities available to you. Talk a little bit about the features of the school. There are a great number. One of the most important is around bring your own device. And we've now done this for seven years. So all students have a device. We weave the use of those devices into the learning in the classroom and of course that was a significant bonus when it came to March the 20th and we were told like other schools in the country we had to close. So over the weekend staff were able to very quickly regroup and be, be able to deliver a full curriculum entitlement to all of our young people, them at home and us working at home as well but remotely. So um, you can see the benefits of the foresight of bringing technology into the classroom. So very proud of that. The arts curriculum is um, something which we debate heavily in education. And for various reasons, the government perhaps haven't put as much emphasis on the arts as a lot of us in education feel they should have done. At Sandringham, we maintain the arts, uh, all of the arts and a great range of them. We are here at the moment in the Sandpit Theatre and that's a celebration area where young people can perform highly, uh, obviously not when we're in at the moment, but when we're not in COVID. Um, and we find that the arts give people the ability to work with each other. It gives them confidence, motivation, inspiration, and so on. There are a number of students of the school who are heavily involved in STEM. Uh, science is their passion. Um, and they will follow those subjects and they will move into degrees in that area, um, which is of great benefit, obviously, to the country. So we put a lot of emphasis and a lot of resources into STEM. Um, an example of that is we've just built three more science laboratories and they opened last week for the benefit of young people at the school. Sport and healthy lifestyles is another aspect of the curriculum which we think is uh, critical. And at Sandringham, every student in Key Stage 4 follows a Level 2 qualification in sports. It's either a GCSE or it is a BTEC. Now that's highly unusual and there are not many schools that uh, structure their curriculum in that way. We do that because we feel it's important young people not only get the enjoyment from exercise and sport, but also they learn about the physiology, the psychology of sport, but also how to look after their bodies and uh, we think that will help them in adult life to maintain a healthy disposition and so on. 
Um, international activities widen the minds of young people and so we have a number of links with countries as you can see on that screen. These are opportunities for young people to spend uh, quite a period of time in another country and gain from that not just learning languages but understanding culture and routines and beliefs and so on. So that's a key feature of the school and it's something which is on hold at the moment and we will return to as soon as we are allowed to. A bit about our next steps. Um, I've highlighted two on this screen. Of course, we have a development plan and there are many things that we're doing as a school, but two in particular are continued development of the campus. And I've highlighted this own theater where we already have planning permission to expand it and we are going through a process as soon as we can now to make that happen. And I think that will further enhance opportunities, not just for young people here, but also the community that use the Sandpit Theatre very heavily. The second one I've mentioned is uh, this theme again of e-learning and virtual learning. Um, Sandringham was identified together with 20, sorry, 19 other schools in, nationwide um, in April to be a, an EdTech demonstrator school. So the DfE identified those schools that were really pushing the boundaries over e-learning and able to cross that divide. And so we've now been supporting other schools uh, to help them do the same. But you know as well as I do that when you teach somebody something, you learn more yourself. So I think we've gained just as much from teaching other people how to use technology um, as we've learned ourselves. We've continued the development of the campus. I'm not going to read down all of these, but there's been a, an amazing development of this campus over the years that I've been here, and it has literally transformed. All of the new buildings are built out of brick. They won't fall down, they'll last forever, they look nice, and they've added to the quality of the environment, not just at Sandringham, but you know, the prosperity of the area, the building stock. You can see there just three of the buildings. We've got our maths and science block. We've got the brand new English and library, which is in the middle. And down at the bottom is the floodlit 3G pitch. And this evening, there are young people out there uh, doing football, hockey. Uh, you can do rugby on it. Um, there's netball going on on the courts and so on. We are a member of a multi-academy trust. And I just want to explain this briefly. Um, what it is, it's uh, schools that come together under one banner and they share um, expertise, they share resources. Um, one of the schools, the Ridgeway Academy, um, the head teacher is here in the audience with us tonight, and they will be um, broadcasting next week as part of the Trust, their open evening. And Verulam, uh, the other secondary school, will be doing likewise towards the end of this month. But I'm delighted to say that last week, two more schools joined the Trust, uh, Wheatfields Junior School and Wheatfields Infants and Nursery School. So we are delighted that they're now part of this Crossface Trust. And next spring, Garden Fields will be joining. And shortly after that, we are very much uh, working with Skyswood to make them part of the trust as well. And it potentially is going to continue growing. It's an exciting time. It means that we can push the boundaries even further by working collectively together. So why choose Sandringham? Well, um, when Ofsted came in 2008, the HMI said to me a number of things, but one stood out and they said, Mr. Gray, you don't leave anything to chance, do you? And, and I looked at her and <clears throat> I was nice in my response, um, but I, inwardly I was thinking, why have you asked that question? And I said, why on earth would we leave anything to chance? Young people's education and lives is the most important thing on the planet. Our job as a school is to give them the best steps that they can so that in the future they will be far more successful than we are as adults. So I just replied and said, why would we leave anything to chance? And I highlight that because attention to detail is what makes schools truly great. Now, I'm going to stop again and we're going to pass over to Nathan and Jessica, who are now in year eight. They actually have not had a whole year at the school because obviously in March they went home. However, they have had an experience and I'm delighted to pass over the reins to them for a moment. Hello, my name is Nathan and I'm a student in year eight here at Sandringham. Hello, 
My name is Jessica and I am also a student in Year 8 at Sandringham. When I first joined Year 7, I wasn't nervous. I was excited. This may have been because I already had a sister at the school. As it turns out, I was right to be excited as I've loved my first year here. I remember being in the same position you may be now, with apprehension of the year, new year ahead. However, there is nothing to fear, I promise you. On my first day, I met my form and had a great time making new friends. Soon we had the club fair, an opportunity to see all of the activities available. I signed up for many clubs, including football and basketball, and I've particularly enjoyed representing the school. As Nathan has just said, there are many great clubs available that allow you to make friends, as well as supplementing your learning. A good example of this is Rodeo Club or Book Bites. I've also loved the many extended learning days scattered throughout the year. This is when you don't have any lessons and instead get to learn fun new skills. I've had a chance to bake, draw and make buildings out of straws. Once I had to go around filming everyone's day and make a movie. It was great. Every teacher is there to help and support you with everything from being lost, homework to friendship issues. But another most important aspect of Sandringham is the things to do. E-Week, the Peak District and of course the school dog, Mabel. My two favourite lessons are PE and English and I would like to go on to do something creative for GCSE. Every lesson is fun and engaging and uses practical elements to help reinforce your learning. A good example of this is science, where you use bunts and burners or slinkies to demonstrate how forces work. I've learnt so much over the past year and I can't believe I'm already in year eight, so I'm looking forward to another year of learning and fun. In conclusion, Sargingham is an amazing place to be, where students can realise and fulfil their potential, and I'm speaking from experience. And it's overall an incredible school. I, we hope to see you there one day. Thank you. And I'll pass over to Mr Gray. Okay, thank you, Nathan and Jessica. Just in case you were wondering, Jessica isn't much bigger than Nathan. It's a trick of the cameras. Um, we have, you know, for whatever reason, one looks bigger than the other. But uh, I assure you they are the same size. Um, okay, where was I? Yes, let's move on. So, um, this is another thing that is part of our philosophy in life at Sandringham, that there are no limits. And we frequently remind young people of this. If you set a glass ceiling, that's what you will achieve. If there's no ceiling, you can achieve anything. Um, in 2016, we had the opportunity to make a contact with Tim Peake on the International Space Station. That pushed us to our limits, actually. We had to um, really gear up, both technically um, and in terms of the structure, getting everybody in place. Um, we were up very early in the morning on that day, you know, four in the morning. Um, so that taught us something as an organisation. And what it taught us is that if you put all of your resources into one thing for a moment in time, then you never forget it. And it's that moment in time which is really critical. And we learnt as an organisation that uh, people, their level of um, expectation increased as a result of that effort, that massive effort. So we then decided as an organisation that we ought to do something really large scale every year. And we would come back to this increase in expectation and notch it up every year. So we then went to space ourselves the following year. Uh, the year after that, every student in the school planted a tree in Hartwood Forest um, as a legacy. And then um, last year, we had a big show, a chemistry show, which was broadcast to two and a half thousand students, all of the students in our multi-academy trust, including those at Ridgeway, um, as I was mentioning. And that was another technical challenge, but we rose to it. We were planning something big this year. It couldn't happen because of COVID. So I've put in there the other challenge that we've now learned from, which is working remotely. And I think that is something which will benefit us now that we are back in school. So there are no limits in life. And if you come to Sandringham, that's one of the, what we expect, that you don't set a limit. Of course, I just mentioned about memories and memories as a human being are what drive us. They're what make us. Um, and all of us, um, even young people, you know, Jessica and Nathan, uh, Lucy and Simi, 
have developed memories over time. And uh, obviously some of them are very strong and very good, some may not be quite so good, but we tend over time to look back on those really good memories. And so our job at Sandringham is to make sure that you, when you come here, have opportunities to strengthen memories and have really fond memories of your time at school. Because at the end of the day, it should be fun. So um, there are various things that we do which will help you cement a memory trail. Some of them are on the board there. There are too many to list. Um, but I do want to mention that we're a bit sad that our year 11 and 13, who have left now, didn't get the opportunity for one of their key memory trails, which was the year 13 and year 11 prom. We obviously couldn't do those. Um, but we did manage to regroup quickly before we had to close down. You can see a photograph there taken in the hall of the year 11. Literally the night before they were told, you, well, you, you've got to stop coming. We don't know what's happening with exams. But you can see that they came back in. They were just happy to see each other, say farewell, not knowing what the future would hold. The good news is the future holds some good things for them. Uh, so those are some of the memories that you will have when you come to Sandringham. And I'm going to finish now with the two questions that I always finish with, and uh, they are critical. You need to think carefully, and I'm talking to the young people now, if you came here, would you be happy? And if you came here, would you be successful? I firmly believe that the answer to both of those questions is yes. Um, our own three children have been through this school, and uh, I think anyway, so they tell me, they were happy. They obviously have been successful. Um, and these young people here have already indicated to you some of the things that they're aspiring to. So I hope that you have found this presentation helpful. I'm sorry it can't be in person. However, we've tried to do it in a personal way. It is live. I, I really am here standing in the theatre now, and it is now 6.33, 6.32, sorry. Um, so you can check your watches. Um, that's what we're doing. And I will be doing a live tour of the school. Uh, the technical people over here are looking a bit scared, but I've told them I want it to happen, so I'm sure it will. So look out for that and look out tomorrow morning on our website for the virtual tour, as I mentioned. And then the last thing is that at the end of this month, um, last week in September, we're going to upload to the website um, information from each subject leader. They have been given 90 seconds and they're going to be a 90 second talk from the head of English, the head of maths, the head of science, and you'll be able to tune in and listen to them as well. So good luck with your choices for secondary school. Um, I hope you've enjoyed what you've heard tonight and I hope to see a lot of you here next year. Thank you very much.